Cool. The big guy's ready to run. Ready to run? Yeah, big guy's ready to run. My background is in uh, lunar rovers and, and the robotics side of things. I could tell my friends that I'm designing, a, I'm reinventing the wheel, and I'm not joking. We have the responsibility to look at different wheel designs, test different wheel designs, and recommend the best wheel design for the lunar rover that Neptech is uh, uh, building with his partners. What we've been trying to do uh, with our students here uh, at McGill uh, and mechanical engineering is underline the fact that design is a collaborative effort, working with different people. When we were looking at our designs that our students were coming out in terms of they were emulating or, or being inspired by different wheels from uh, the literature, they were el essentially elastic, similar to the rubber wheel. Basically, when you dropped it, it bounced back. And how could we actually absorb that energy? Because if we could absorb it, as I mentioned, then maybe our vehicles could actually go faster. Maybe they could absorb more shock, things like that. And at some point, I said, well, geez, you know, one of the things that we know that it absorbs energy very, very well is tumbling mills. Tumbling mills are basically these large tubes that rotate. They have balls and rocks in them. They basically lift the rocks up, drop them, lift them up, drop them. I say, well, geez, well, what if, how could we put that inside a wheel? And we started looking around, well, if you put it inside a wheel that's rigid, it still won't work. But if you could put a flexible membrane on it, then once you start thinking of flexible membrane, well, then how flexible can it be? <laughs> we wanted basically to have a fabric type behavior to that. Uh, that tire. The first uh, prototype was uh, I went out to grab my son's uh, bean bag. Basically, I sandwiched it between two discs on a shaft, and there was our first wheel. We took our concept to a tailor uh, on the way to the metro, and so we brought our drawings, and he looked at us like we were crazy. But he, uh, he said, Fine, I'll do it. And he made some modifications that were interesting, and so we said, sure, go ahead. And then eventually, we got this wheel, which works pretty well. This was good enough to just prototype with, uh, but eventually on the moon, we know that the surface is fine particulates, rocky particulates that are really sharp, so soft materials like this will just get eaten up. Our rocks, sand that's found on beaches, is actually quite rounded. Okay. But the sand, or the regolith, on the moon is actually very, very angular. It has a lot of surface area as compared to our sand. Okay. And that in itself creates some interesting abrasion type uh, issues. Well, what is um, very hard or very resistant to wear, uh, typically you'd think metals, um, and uh, what is a fabric that has those properties. And so, you know, the first thing that pops into the into one's mind is chain mail, right? Because people make clothing out of this. It's basically a fabric that's made out of metal. And so that was one of our first ideas is that why not just take this chain mail and just wrap it around one of these wheels. And that exactly is the effect that we were looking for. So we don't want to fill it all the way up. We want the particles to flow from one side to the next as the wheel is turning. Right. And so this allows, so if you hit something, the particles can take the shock. From that point on, we started to look at uh, different things. Uh, Dan brought in uh, the bead lock rim. He said, oh, well, this is a perfect interface in terms of the bead lock rim. We made holes in the chain mail and just sandwiched it onto an aluminum rim with these rings. Now this is something that you find on regular vehicles. It's called a beadlock rim. And it's used actually in rock crawling and competition rock crawling for Jeeps and uh, Hummers to stop the bead of the wheel from popping off the rim due to all the strange forces it's seeing. And this is a very convenient way of making these. On the moon, you have one sixth the gravity of the Earth. So if you want to go faster, okay, you hit a rock and you're going to bounce off that rock at a certain speed. If you're carrying a payload, a sensitive payload, like an astronaut even, or instrumentation, well, you will be limited in the amount of speed, at the speed at which you can travel. But if you have something that can actually absorb 
that energy, well then you can potentially go faster. So we're going to go faster this way. Traction is basically how much can this vehicle pull. If you attach uh, a load here and you want to drive it in the sand, how much can it pull? If you have a smooth rigid wheel, it will pull less than something that's like this. So in this particular case, these uh, I-ring wheels actually have traction characteristics, at least for the wheels that we tested, that are uh, equal or slightly superior than what we have for rubber. We talked about traction, we talked about shock absorption. The other one is conforming to surfaces. So what you see here is the wheels, they're starting to conform to these angular rocks. So on these rock surfaces, it actually adds some traction in terms of conforming to the rocks. No, it's not like the Apollo mission where we had to send a rover up there that would last 20, 25, 100 kilometers in terms of travel. We're looking at a rover that potentially will travel 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 kilometers. So the design issues are different. It becomes, comes down to reliability. So what makes a design optimum? So, you know, just thinking, looking at this right now, you could say, well, why this size of particulate? Maybe you would want something bigger or something smaller. Maybe you would want more fill or less fill. So these are different design parameters that we would investigate. This is one of the potential wheel designs. It is not the final wheel design. Um, it may be the final wheel design or something similar. If this design actually makes it onto the moon, um, I'll be very proud, I'll be, uh, I'll just feel that I was a part of history. After seeing what our smaller wheels are looking like, we have finally come to the CSA and been able to install the wheels onto the Juno rover. It's a scalable wheel. You can go from very small wheels to very large wheels, and, and the behavior will still remain the same, which is really good, because if, if it doesn't, then you can only go to a certain limit, and that's it. People have been working towards developing flexible wheel concepts, and this idea is truly unique to Canada. as it goes over the rocks, it's actually conforming to the surface of the rocks. So you're actually getting very good traction between the wheel and the surface that it's on. There's also terrestrial applications that we'd like to see if we could explore. The first one that comes to mind is you're in an earthquake disaster area. There's rubble strewn over the streets. A uh, rubber-tired vehicle will have difficulty traveling over those things. A wheel like this potentially has the ability to drive over those rock strewn or brick strewn streets and support the population that is obviously in a dire need in that particular case. We have several planetary missions on the drawing board today. Wheels or rovers are candidates that Canada could provide that are a natural evolution of our robotics expertise in Canada. I'm very happy with what we saw today. The design looks robust. We saw that the wheels were conforming to the rocks. See, ça conforme bien, tu vois. We did drive down a rock staircase and the eye rings looked quite good. We haven't done any extreme testing because we did not want to kill them today. But the tests that we have conducted are conclusive and it looks like a good prototype. Being able to come from, you know, just as a design professor, you see something that comes from an idea to mock up to prototype to prototype and it's being delivered to Canadian space agency for use so that's quite exciting seeing a project going from you know idea all the way to well, almost product